from the Big Heavy World Studios in Burlington, Vermont. This is the Anything Show with John Francois. I hope you know what you're in for. Okay, um, I, you know I had a brain fart, Mary. <laughs> So literally, I forgot to pull up the celebrity gossip theme music, so I was doing that uh, while the theme song was playing. I, I need to keep up with my theme songs now. Uh, what do you what, what do you think? I mean, I mean, you probably should just take over the show. Honestly, probably. Like <laughs> I would honestly do a better job. Oh, at it, so. fine. Be you that. suck. Oh <laughs> wow, wow! I invited you into my territory, into this blessed show, and this is how you do it. You poo poo on my fruit. <laughs> well, loops. maybe if you did it right. <laughs> yeah, Mary is poo pooing on my Fruit Loops right now, and it doesn't taste good. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of which, my dog Buddy he just uh, poo pooed in the studio and poo pooed in my car, and I'm trying to find out where he poo pooed in the studio. So while we figure that out, hey, it's the Anything Show, Saturday, October 17th, as we record this. John Francois here at the Big Heavy World Studios in Burlington. My partner in crime, uh, Main Squeeze Mary, coming from the Park and Ride location in Lindenville, Vermont. Hey, Mary. Hello, hello. Yes, indeed. We're back after a week off. Here's what we're getting into. We got some celebrity gossip coming up. Kanye West, uh, b- believe it or not, is still in the race. I could have sworn, Mary, that uh, he dropped out, but no. Uh, his first pres- I thought that too, but... <laughs> yeah. His first presidential campaign ad was released, and Mary actually voted early, and uh, you saw whose name on the ballot? I saw Kanye's name. Like, <laughs> I, I was just like... I just opened it up and briefly glanced at it, and I just saw his name, and I just burst out laughing. I'm like, are you <laughs> actually kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. Did people around you wonder, like, oh, what's so funny? Oh, my God. Is it Sleepy Joe? Yeah, Is it my Trump? mom knew she was basically, she was like, yeah, did you see his name? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I probably will have the same reaction when I vote. But yeah, that's the reality. Kanye West, a rapper, is actually on the ballot. And we'll get into his first presidential campaign ad later on. Uh, We'll also get viral with our viral videos of the week. We have a grocery store musical from TikTok that you have to hear, Mary. And uh, we have some headlines. Um, Oh, my God. Top of the headlines. We got to talk about coronavirus erotica. Yes. It's basically 50 shades of gray and coronavirus all put together into one. You can listen. I know, I know. Let's get our jollies on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can listen to the Anything Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Facebook at the Anything Show and on Instagram at Anything Show Francois. Okay, Mary, now that uh, we have to deal with the pungent, poopy smell of my dog in the studio, shall we get into headlines? I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I told Mary that my dog pooped in the studio and, 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 and in the car. And she laughed at me as if I have, like, a big pimple on my face. It's like, you know what, Mary? (laughs) Dog poop in your face is not funny unless it happens to you. Or it's funny unless it happens to you. (sighs) Well, it didn't happen to me, so. Oh, God, you're so self-centered. Okay. Headlines. Let's talk coronavirus erotica. All right, here we go. We have an erotic romance novel where a scientist falls in love with and gets it on with coronavirus. This has actually gone viral, Mary. The book is called Kissing the Coronavirus because that's exactly what we want to do with a virus that is deadly. We want to kiss it as if it's a sexy woman or man. Obviously. (laughs) Yeah. Do you want to know what the story's about? I mean, I guess. I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah, an evil scientist catches the virus, and it turns him into a human version of Corona that the main character can now have sex with. (laughs) Yeah. Who thinks of this stuff? Uh, Someone who is very bored during the pandemic and who clearly wants to cash in easily on the pandemic. Um, I guess so. Yeah, you know, Mary, I think this deserves some sexy music. I actually have a quote from the book. Uh, you want to? Yes. You, you want me to read the quote? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With some sexy music. Oh yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> I know. I know. Here we go. This is from Kissing the Coronavirus. Quote: Alexa felt a rush of excitement every time she picked up the Corona sample, like a pulsating erect penis, desperate to unleash its devastation on anyone who touched it (laughs) end quote that is wonderful that's it that's it you know what if you want to find out more you got to buy the book kissing the coronavirus and uh, whoever that author is you're welcome i gave you free publicity so (laughs) 
Yeah. Hey, uh, speak- wow. I-, I know. I mean, would you buy the book, Mary? Because, I mean, you seem like someone who has like a closeted sexual desire to kiss things that are weird, like the coronavirus. You might. You to might. kiss viruses and bacteria? Sure. No, thank you. Sure. Okay. Okay. So this this might be a little bit too much. You, 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 you might be fine with 365 days on Netflix, but this one is like, no, it, it's, it's too far. I mean, because 365 was actually two people and oh. it wasn't based on a pandemic like, i see what? i see because because one <laughs> of the two people aren't like the human incarnation of the coronavirus you're just saying nah that's that's a different story john <sighs> <sighs> so i mean desperate to unleash its devastation on anyone who touched it yeah that part's funny i like that part <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah funny to you but maybe a little bit uh hot and steamy for someone else who has a screwed up <laughs> mind so <laughs> I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of sexy, a new study, Mary, next headline, found men. A new study found men with deep, sexy voices might be more likely to cheat, possibly because they have more testosterone. Uh, Now, Mary, as someone in a relationship here, uh, be honest, do I have a uh, deep, sexy voice? You're probably gonna say no. <laughs> I mean, you have a you have a normal guy voice. Oh, I would say like. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So if I... that's not deep. That part's not deep. Exactly. Exactly. That's the point. Because if I raise my voice up like Mickey Mouse, then I'm less likely to cheat on my girlfriend. <laughs> yes. If you feel the urge to cheat, just be like, I need to hire my voice. Oh boy, now I'm all set. I definitely won't cheat. Oh my god, <laughs> just imagine trying to turn someone on with this voice. Hey honey, can you get out of those pants right now? I would want to make love to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at my pulsating erect penis, desperate to unleash its oh devastation on anybody who touched it. <laughs> I'm uh, ready to unleash my devastation onto you. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That was, that was me. That was me finishing. Okay. Oh my lord. And as we said that, we got kicked off of every radio station that aired us. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, let, let, let's 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 uh, let's get more family friendly and let's talk about sex, Mary. One out of four single people <laughs> in a recent survey had sex with their roommate during the quarantine. Yes, uh, because you know you're stuck inside and you look at your roommate and you say, "Wow, I need sex." Uh, he, l- l- let me let me bang Marsha with the sweatpants. Be like, mm, I guess you're not that unattractive. <laughs> yeah, but you really have to think about the morning after. Like, I mean, if if if, if it's one of those that things, that would be really awkward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so awkward. I don't have a roommate, so I don't have that problem. Exactly. But... Especially if it was like your sister or your brother. Like that would be kind of weird if you had sex with your relative. Uh... <laughs> A little weird, a little weird. Already, we're not in Alabama. So. Oh, okay, okay, fine. I thought we were, but, uh, you know. <laughs> One would argue that Vermont acts like the South, which is where we're based, by the way, for those of you listening outside of Vermont. Um, hey, uh, the same survey, actually, Mary, the same survey said that 16% of single people say they've been getting it on with themselves more often during the pandemic, huh? Oh, that's both hilarious and sad, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, if you're not working or, like, spending time with friends or whatever, and you have all this alone time, you, yeah. like, <laughs> have already done everything else. You're just like, hmm, what can I do now to fill uh, the void of loneliness? Hey, self, let's put on <laughs> some candles. Let's put on some moonlight. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, self, I love you so much. Oh, what a nice pimple you have on your arm. Let me lick it, self. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god, is that some pizza sauce that you accidentally left on your clothes, self? <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Let's lick that all over. All right, so, so we're getting we're getting way too dirty. I'm sorry. I'm so Hello? sorry. I'm so sorry to any Catholic or Christian or or any religious person listening right now. Um, I I clearly <laughs> or just any decent human being in general. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Hey, uh, let's let's clean it up. Let's talk more about sex. A guy recently wrote into the Ask Amy newspaper advice column. Mary, this is our next headline. Uh, Ask Amy newspaper advice column. This guy wrote into it because his wife refused to touch him since the pandemic started, even after he tested negative for coronavirus. Now, uh, Amy suggested two possible reasons. One, his wife is overly germaphobic and probably needs therapy. Or two, there might de- there might be deeper problems in the marriage. Uh, what's I mean, probably both. Both. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, she's suddenly germaphobic. I mean, because I, I mean, if you're germaphobic, that's something that carries with you for your whole life. I mean, I, I don't feel like you can just be germaphobic all of a sudden during the coronavirus. So it might well, be- yeah, but there hasn't always been a pandemic either. True. So like the the <clears throat> flu season in the fall is different than like this pandemic that's going on. It's probably going to be going on for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Like that's completely different than like sitting next to your coworker who has the sniffles. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So so you're saying that the wife is germaphobic and, and she doesn't want to be married to her husband at the same time. I mean, it seems like, yeah, like maybe she is germaphobic, but I think that there's also like some marriage issues because like now it's a, now it's she's just using it as an excuse like, oh, I can't touch you because I don't want to get sick. When in reality, she just has like has never, ever wanted to touch him ever. <laughs> a divorce is on the way. I cannot wait. Yay. <laughs> I love divorces. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, hey, sorry, sorry. My parents had one, so I, I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You love it? I, I, I'm kidding. I went dark there, Mary. I went unnecessarily dark. <laughs> uh, hey, next headline here. Speaking of coronavirus, the California governor's office has put out a message telling people that if they do go out to eat, they should pull up their mask in between bites. Uh, so me and Mary, yeah. based in Vermont, so I guess we're so glad we're not in California right now. Yeah, that that's just that's just too much work. Come on now. Yeah. And then you're gonna like get food bits in your mask and. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. I, I feel like for all that work, you just you just stay home with crappy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know, exactly. Seems a lot better. Hey, speaking of food, uh, Hormel Foods, uh, they created a face mask that smells like bacon. Uh, They say it's a, quote, revolutionary face mask featuring the latest in pork scented technology and quote. Uh, And this is actually a contest, Mary. You can enter for a chance to win this bacon scented face mask uh, for free. You you, you could enter for a chance to win one for free at breathablebacon.com. And they'll announce the winners on November 4th, which I believe is the day after the election. Uh, Mary, uh, would you go for a bacon-scented face mask? Because I know you like bacon. I like bacon. What say you? I mean, first of all, you're insane if you don't like bacon. Second of all, (laughs) I I mean, I do love bacon, but I don't know if I could have that on my face all day. Like, I would constantly be hungry. You know, it's interesting that you say that because for me, it's I feel like this would be the easiest way to get tired of bacon. Because even though I love the taste of bacon with my eggs, um, bacon has a very, like, sizzly, saucy, heavy uh, smell to it. That if I just had that around me all the time, um, I, I'd just be nauseous from bacon eventually. No, I, I would love it. I would, I would probably... If I if I was surrounded by the scent of bacon all the time, I would just have to have actual bacon, and I would actually gain like three hundred pounds. All so. right. Well, there you go. There you go. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Fat ass Mary on the way. Here we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Speaking of uh, wanting to make out with bacon, because clearly Mary wants to do that right now. Hey, did you know, Mary, that people are now reluctant to give strangers mouth to mouth or CPR? Because they're afraid of catching coronavirus. Ugh. Now, you had an interest... That's a little intense. Because, I mean, the only time you perform CPR is if it's for life-saving measure. You don't do it for fun. So, like, if someone needs CPR, they're clearly dead or dying. Yeah. And, like, you're just going (laughs) to let that person die because you don't want to, like... There's different ways. I mean, you don't have... So you don't have to like put your lips on the person. You can like kind of make a make a tunnel with your hands kind of and put your put your face on your hand into their on their mouth so like you're not directly touching mm. them. All right. But they're still like right. getting air. And like I, I don't know, just like CPR it's not always mouth mouth to mouth. It's a lot of chest compressions. Yeah. I just think it's stupid <laughs> if you walk by someone and they're in the street and they're unconscious and they're not breathing. It's like, hmm, well, yeah, yeah. you know, they might have COVID, so I just... I, I know they're dead and they <laughs> literally just died. Uh, who cares, who cares so about their life? A chance that I could revive them, but eh, I, I I just don't want to do mouth to mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the way I see it is similar to you. So, so you're definitely going to let someone die because they may or may not have a virus that may or may not kill them. 
So you really have to um, uh, kind of put your virus anxiety aside and save the damn person's life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But, I mean, hey, if they ended up having COVID and you catch COVID and you die, then at least you died a hero. I guess. All righty. Well, uh, speaking of things that are heroic, I got to give a shout out to uh, Top Ramen. Top Ramen, uh, giving you your favorite ramen noodles. Oh, my God. I've had so many college and current bachelor experiences with ramen noodles, and now it's going to be put to good use. Uh, I believe you can find this on our Facebook page at The Anything Show. Top Ramen is hiring a chief noodle officer to help test out new recipes. They're going to pay you, Mary, $10,000, plus give you a 50-year supply of Top Ramen products. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's a lot of sodium. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And also, uh, 50 years of Top Ramen, I mean, what is that, like 10 bucks worth? Uh, you know, ramen is pretty cheap, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I would save a lot on groceries. <laughs> I mean, I could I could buy fifty years worth of Top Ramen right now. I don't know if I want to win it for free. I mean, it's just it's it's just uh, I don't know. But anyway, I mean, it, it it is it is ten grand. So uh, maybe I should write a letter to Top Ramen. Should I write a letter right now, Mary? I mean, it wouldn't hurt. It's just a couple sentences. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let me let me do it right now. And then you you could literally just like <laughs> give all the ramen. To everyone you know. Yeah, yeah. This is some letter writing music, Mary. I want to write a letter right now. Dear, okay. Dear, dear Ramen, I boiled you a lot in college and beyond. Please give me money. I followed the directions and did not burn down a building. Sincerely, John. <laughs> you think that'll get me the $10,000? I think you might have to try a little bit harder. Than uh, you but know. it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I gotta pay off some credit card debt, so they better give me that ten grand right now, or I'm gonna shoot somebody on Fifth <laughs> Avenue. To quote our very own president, uh, <laughs> I know I got controversial there. Alrighty, what else we got here? Uh, we're, we're, we're reviewing the headlines, the top headlines of the week, right here on the Anything Show with me, John, and Main Squeeze Mary on the line here on Skype. Mary, do you know? Do you know that you have the opportunity to celebrate Christmas with coronavirus? Coronavirus. Great. I know, right? <laughs> Corona Just who I wanted to spend holidays with. <laughs> Our good old friend, the Rona. Uh, Coronavirus-themed Christmas ornaments have sold out online. Uh, they include things like Santa wearing a mask, a bottle of hand sanitizer, a roll of toilet paper. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the happiest time of the year for a lot of people, so I think we definitely want to be reminded of the saddest thing that's happened this year, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it only seems fair. Yeah. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be that happy. No one deserves to be that happy. You Ab gotta. You gotta add a little bit of sadness into everyone's life. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> twenty twenty has been depressing. Let's just kind of poke that depression even more with coronavirus Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Which brings me to my next headline, Mary. You know that most malls around the country they will not be having kids sit on Santa's lap this year. Instead, uh, here's the fun part: they're going to do socially distanced visits, including uh, wearing a mask. Uh, they're going to have plexiglass dividers, and they're going to have photos with Santa from a distance. Oh, my God. Is that even, are they going to, like, take two separate photos and then Photoshop it so it seems like you're together? I guess. Like <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, at this point, uh, you know, between the coronavirus Christmas ornaments and the Santa distancing, I mean, why, why do we even uh, why, why even have Christmas this year? Let's just cancel it. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, some people are are putting up their decorations right now because we need something to be happy about this year. But I don't know. I mean, it's not even Halloween. Come on. Hey, hey. You know how this works, Mary. Christmas is celebrated. I know. Uh, Christmas is celebrated earlier and earlier every single year. I mean, at this point, soon it'll be celebrated in January. Eggs. I mean, like we'll take your Christmas ornaments down by new year's and then by january a week later they'll be back up <laughs> exactly exactly you might as well leave your christmas tree up year round because before you know it boom santa claus is going to be knocking on your doorstep again without your consent <laughs> yes <sighs> in june <laughs> yeah and last story uh right here on the anything show six percent of people say they've actually spent more time on personal grooming during the pandemic than ever before now um up until uh, i went back to my barber in lindenville vermont mary i did do my own home style haircuts that took me like three hours uh mary uh this is monumental because right now tell us what you're thinking of doing with your hair yeah so i'm actually i'm gonna do something <clears throat> 
completely different than what I've ever done. So I was like, you know, I figured, why not? It's 2020. I might as well have some happiness in my life. And <laughs> yeah, Mary's had a tough I year. Mean, every girl ever after a rough breakup gets something crazy done with their hair, right? I, I mean, I was going to say, that, yeah. That's just like something that has to be done. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is this a breakup related makeover? But I didn't want to trivialize it. I just figured that, oh, Mary just happens to want to have a change to her hairstyle. So, um, so, so you're, so you're not. I mean, it's honestly, it's, it's like just something that I want to do, but. Um, I, I want, I like to donate my hair. Actually, I get it cut usually every two years. Yeah. It's long, gets long enough to donate. Um, and so I want to do that. So however short it becomes, then I want to, um, dye it. So basically like I've gotten highlights before, but it's going to be a little bit different. I can't really pronounce it. I think it's like bal- balayage or something like that mm-hmm. where you, you keep your natural color roots, but then as you go down your hair, it gets lighter. Yeah. Like it fades into a blonde kind of, hmm. and that's what I want to do. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, when you get your, well, well I, I need you to uh, give us a before and after picture. So uh, send me a picture with your hair now, and then send me a picture after your hair is done. Uh, are, are we able to post this on the Anything Show pages? Sure. Yeah. Yay. Okay. All right. Don't forget that, Mary, because we need to see... Uh, for sure that you have not gone full buzz cut lesbian, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, no, no offense to I won't. <laughs> no, no, no offense to buzz cut su- Subaru owning lesbians, but uh, Mary, I don't think you you have the power to pull off the buzz cut lesbian look. So I, I, I'm hoping. I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think I I'm brave enough to do that. <laughs> I don't think I'm brave enough to shave any part of my head yet. Maybe maybe in a couple years I'll be brave enough, but not okay. yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, that is our headlines right here on the Anything Show. And if you have a headline you want to send me and Mary, Facebook at The Anything Show. We're also on Instagram at Anything Show Francois. That's Anything Show, F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S. All right, Mary, uh, I am done blabbering for just a moment. I just want to hear random audio clips of people acting crazy. Shall we get to our viral videos of the week? Yes. Yes, it's Let's Get Viral. All righty, y'all. Um, first up, Mary. Now, do you ever wonder, like the TV reporters that you see, do you ever wonder if they carry that TV reporter voice with them home? Have you ever wondered that? Yeah. Like, I think de- people definitely, for their jobs, they have different voices that they would use. Like, if I'm answering the phone or whatever or talking to somebody, I have more of a customer service voice than my normal voice, which I think would probably get me fired. But... <laughs> <laughs> What you want? That's Mary's actual voice. Exactly. Like, what? Yeah. Get out of here. I'm sleeping. All righty. Well, if TV reporters did the newsy talk at home, this is probably what it would sound like. Uh, What you're going to hear, Mary, is Jeanette Reyes of station WPVI in Philadelphia and her husband, Good Morning Washington anchor Robert Burton. Here they are discussing their dinner plans in their news anchor voice. Reporting live here in the kitchen. Your time now is 5.52. And we're trying to figure out what we'd like for, for dinner. So the options are right now lasagna, chicken fettuccine alfredo, or a ribeye. If you can help us out here, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at 7abc.com and let us know what the choice is for tonight. Robert. All right, Jeanette, thanks. In the meantime, I am checking that poll, and a lot of people seem to be in favor of that steak. Uh, when I say a lot of people, of course, I mean me. So when that steak is done, let me know. I like it medium rare, as you know. And when it's done, I will meet you at the dining room table. But for now, live in the kitchen on the other side of the bar, Robert Burton. Yeah, so obviously this is how news anchors talk at home. <laughs> yes, obviously. Oh, God, <laughs> reporting live from my kitchen, I have a chicken parm. Back to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mary, you might get a kick out of this. Uh, this next one, next viral video. This boy is reading a math problem in a book about somebody named Jaden who has a $1 bill, one quarter, and two pennies. And here is how the boy honestly reacts to uh, Jaden's issue. Jaden has $1 bill, one quarter, and two pennies. How, how, much, money, how much money does he have? Jaden broke. <laughs> Yeah, Jaden is broke. 
<laughs> that's great. I uh, mean, that's all that matters, really. It doesn't even matter if you have one dollar and tw- uh, twenty-seven cents. Yeah, like, yeah. That's you're just you're broke. Holy you cr- might as well live in a box. Holy crap! Did you just do mental math right there? One dollar bill, one quarter, and two pennies. Is that one dollar and twenty-seven cents? No. I, I failed math miserably. I, I failed math miserably. My dad screamed at me because I wasn't good at math. I mean, you, you, you got to help me out here. So we got $1 bill, one quarter, which is 25. So how, how much oh, is a quarter? Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I need a ding, ding. I need a ding, ding because I finally got a math problem right in my head. <laughs> yes, with the assistance of Mary. So it really doesn't count. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. How did you do that so quickly, though? Because I'm looking at $1 bill, one quarter, and two pennies in words on my show prep, and it just looks like Chinese to me. But you're able to actually say to your to yourself, Mary, that's $1.27. What's your secret? I was good at math. <laughs> wow. All right. You need to do my taxes next year. <sighs> I haven't done that. My mom does those for me. <laughs> oh, I was gonna. I, I thought you were gonna say you haven't done your taxes. I was like, oh my god, Mary, if you didn't do your taxes, <laughs> no, my mom does the taxes. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say well, we, the the IRS. Please go, go get Mary in handcuffs right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm calling myself out. I have not done my taxes yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. And I've always wanted to lock you up, Mary. So that this is actually yeah. a, a dream come true for me. This is your opportunity. Yep. Next viral <laughs> video of the week, right here on the Anything Show. We got this comedian named Alexis Gay. She posted a video that kind of sums up the year 2020 it is her wide range of answers after someone asked the question how you doing yeah i'm good i'm good i'm good i'm good i'm good all things considered in the grand scheme of things given everything going on i am physically here so that's something it could be worse it could be worse it could be worse existential dread everybody is engaged somehow i don't this does not strike me as a sexy romantic time but okay you know i'm not bad but i feel bad i am meditating human conditions like should i move seems like a bad time to move but should i two weeks ago i plunged deep into the pit of despair taking things one day at a time now i'm just sort of sitting next to the pit trying to keep perspective like you're not gonna get me again but it will. I did just rewatch Parks and Rec. Do you have a panic show? I wrote the date yesterday and I was three days off. My best friend just had a baby. My other best friend just bought a house. Another one just got engaged. It's like, well, what am I doing? I mean, Chris Saka followed me on Twitter, but personally, I would like for this to be over. I can't control what's happening, but I can control my reaction to it. And my reaction is largely what the fuck, but I can control that. Yeah, yeah. So so it's very indicative of uh, of just the fact that our minds are just all over the place. We've gone insane. Uh, how you doing? Is is it is there really a way to answer that in just one sentence uh, for this year? Probably yeah, not. Yeah, like I actually want to slap everyone who asks how are you today or how have you been. Yeah, just yeah. like don't even ask that question <laughs> anymore. That question is just irrelevant. Oh, God. Just assume that I've been awful and terrible. Just like everyone else on planet Earth. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Mary, um, okay, considering that uh, you've gone through an awful breakup, uh, considering the fact that you are uh, looking for a job and hopefully finding results, considering the fact that there is a pandemic going right now, how are you doing? <laughs> Don't even. Okay, okay. You're so oh, lucky okay. I'm not there. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'm just trying to be a friend here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But how are you doing, John? <laughs> um, Aside from the uh, rancid, poopy smell in the studio, I think I'm doing all right. I think I'm doing all right. I mean, yeah, I would like this pandemic to be over so uh, we can go to the bar and we can uh, go to like a haunted attraction and things could be normal. Um, yes. You know, and I don't and, and, and you know, uh, and I don't I would like to not worry about uh, visiting my family in Connecticut on Thanksgiving because apparently cases are rising and it's because of small family gatherings. Uh, so, or just, you know, you're almost at the door of the store and then realize you forgot your mask. Yeah. So you have to walk all the way back to your car <laughs> to get it. Uh, or you, uh, you know, drive all the way to a, uh, a mall for a specific store and then you find out that's that, closed. That, yeah, the store closed three years ago. Three years ago. <laughs> All right, well, that's got nothing to do with the pandemic. All right, fine. So all things considering, Mary, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Alrighty, we're, re- we're, we're reviewing the viral videos of the week right here on The Anything Show. Our next video here, um, oh, me and Mary, we're not on TikTok, but we know of TikTok. And this guy, he, he made a musical on TikTok about meeting someone at the grocery store. 
Take a listen. I just met someone in the grocery store and I think I might love them. That's crazy. I think I might like them or maybe something more. We met right here in aisle nine. Oh, someone tell me, is this a sign here in the grocery store? Standing right here next to plastic knives. Who knew that love? grocery store yes here in the grocery listen up closely here in the grocery store yeah grocery store musical on tiktok you know mary i think this is perfect if you've been quarantined for the past few months and your first day back with human interaction is at the grocery store. Like, if you're that person, I could see you busting out in musical form like that. Yes, literally. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, uh, next. Oh, my God. You might get a kick out of this, Mary. So uh, the CNN reporter, Joe Johns, he was about to go live from the White House lawn on Tuesday night when a raccoon got way too close uh, so he uh, clearly wasn't happy about that because, you know, you know, you're covering the Trump White House. It's crazy enough as it is. Let him do his job. Get! There he is. Ah! Now, no events on the president's schedule today, and important to say, the White House. Frickin' raccoons, man. God, again, this is the second time. Jesus. Yeah, and I love how he, he just go, go, goes smoothly from, get, get, get. All right, the president is uh, reporting from the White House that uh, COVID-19 is not a real thing. Get out of here. <laughs> yes, that's uh, awesome. Oh, my God. Hey, our, our next viral video right here on The Anything Show. Uh, Mary, I think, is, is your mom still a fan of Johnny Cash? I think so. What do you mean you think so? She, I, I know so because she requested it on my Flashback Friday program on Magic 97.7 in Lindenville, Vermont. Then, yes, probably. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know your mom better than you do. <laughs> Jeez, man. You know what? Uh, Mary's mom, if you're listening right now, um, can you please uh, un uh, own your child and please adopt me? Can I replace your <laughs> child? John I, wants to be adopted. <laughs> yeah, because clearly I, I would make a better child to you than Mary would. <sighs> I know you're Johnny Cash. All right. Well, the There I Ruined It YouTube channel, Mary, they posted a disco version of Johnny Cash's Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe if your mom likes a little bit of disco with her country, she might dig this. I hear the train coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. And time keeps dragging on. If I'm not mistaken, I think people booed Johnny Cash doing disco. Did you hear that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. But that is absolutely something my mom would listen to. Really? Oh, my God. We, we got to <laughs> yes. pump it. We, uh, so, so whenever your mom allows me into the house, uh, we, we will uh, we will pump it up like it's no tomorrow. Because uh, Mary's mom, <laughs> Mary's mom, understandably, she wants me to wear a mask. She wants me to wear a hazmat suit when I walk in the house now. So. <laughs> It's gas mask. A gas mask. Uh, she wants me to wear uh, 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 big uh, rubber gloves that you would normally use to, like, wash the floor. Like, it's a whole thing. <laughs> uh, hey, Mary, uh, you ever have those moments where you, like, like the microphone on your uh, iPhone or your tablet is on without you even knowing it? So maybe, like, you're ordering something at a fast food place or maybe, like, you're screaming at, like, your brother and, like, the microphone is picking up everything you're saying, and all of a sudden you look at your phone, and it's like, wait, what, what are all these words that are coming up on my phone? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's happened to me, and it's what's happened to this grandma. Uh, if you look at our uh, Facebook page, at The Anything Show, uh, this grandma trying to figure out the microphone on her tablet, and what she doesn't know is that the microphone is just basically recording everything she's saying as she's trying to figure it out. Uh, so this is basically uh, the grandma, uh, you know, uh, saying... You, 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 you get the point. Where, where's my grandma clip? Grandma, take it away. 
and I hope this comes out right because oh I should say a period right it, oh oh I, it, I'm sorry wait a minute <laughs> oh breathe deep okay oh, what does that say wait a minute I'll, I'll read it okay what is it? it say wait a minute I read it okay who read it okay is she answering me? Is she talking back to me? No, that's you. Is that me? <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, old people are so adorable when they're trying to figure out technology. <laughs> that is wonderful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, that's is, so wholesome. <laughs> is, 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 is that your parents in a nutshell? I mean, is your mom yes. or dad? Oh, really? Yes, actually. <laughs> really? Your, 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 your mom or dad had one of those moments where they're, they're, they're just talking and their phone is picking up what they're saying and they're just like, wait, why, 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 is, it to, why is it picking up what I'm saying? I don't think they've had that experience, but just, like, I can see them doing that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? This next viral video, very fitting because uh, it smells like dog poop in the studio, buddy. Oh, God. Buddy. <laughs> I tell you, man, this dog, I mean, he's a good boy, and I probably should have uh, responded to his whining. Because literally before we left to get to the studio here in Burlington, he was whining like a baby, and I thought he was just being a baby Mary. But it turns out uh, he had to do some poopy doopy. so. Aww. No, no, don't, 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 aw. You know, he knows better than not to poop in the car. so neglectful. You know what, you know what, you know what, you know what? You and my girlfriend are both, are are like, you know, you're the worst owner, John. You're abusing your dog. You know what? I I am being a tough love guy. I'm sorry if I don't want my dog to poop in my car, okay? Well, then you should have taken him out when he was crying. He was taken out already this morning. He only needs to be taken out like once or twice a day. So I don't know. not even true for any dog ever. Uh, for this dog, he actually holds it in pretty well. It, it, every dog is different, Mary. I mean, your dogs, Jasmine and Pokey, maybe they need to be taken out like five times a day because they're princesses. But my dog is a man. OK, he's a man. <laughs> yes. My goodness. Damn it. I could take him out on Saturday, October 17th, and he may not have to go again until Thursday, October 25th. Poor buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe I am abusing him. Uh, no, no, I take my dog out every day. It's okay. Um, hey, uh, speaking of poop, this these little kids, oh, my God, if you look on our Facebook page at The Anything Show, our next viral video, these little kids, man, they are having a blast um, asking Google to make a certain sound, and you probably know what it is. Okay, Google, make the sound of a fart. Guys. This is a fart. <laughs> So obviously the downside of being a kid in 2020, Mary, is that you cannot sit on Santa's lap. But the upside is, is that when you first discover that Google can make these sounds, oh, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's basically Christmas morning. Uh, if Christmas, That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd probably do the same thing if you were five. Like, hey, Google, can you please poo-poo? Can you make a trumpet oh, noise out of your definitely. butt? Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Uh, next video. So this is also coming from TikTok. Um, a cruise ship captain named Kate McHugh has gone viral with a video of herself calling out a sexist internet troll with bad grammar. So uh, in the caption, in the video, Mary, this troll says, how can you be a captain? You're only a woman. And he spells your Y-O-U-R instead of Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. So this is how the woman responds to that guy. Normally as I'm scrolling through comments and I see something like this, I totally ignore it and move on with my life. But I think it's about high time that I address this because it's 2020. And in this day and age, I'm shocked that someone still doesn't know the difference between your and your. So just a quick reference, your as in you are, like you are sexist. Your is something possessive, it belongs to you, like your ignorance. But don't worry, I'm here for you. If you need any more clarification, you can find me here in my captain's chair. So basically, she took that moment to be very witty. Uh, she could have been obvious, Mary, and just say, wow, why are you being so sexist? But, you know, she decided to make fun of the moment and make fun of the guy's grammar. Because if you notice, Mary... That's something I would do. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you notice, Mary, a lot of trolls on the internet, they really don't know how to spell. They really don't. It's, <laughs> like, so baffling and sad at the same time. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. It's so basic. Yeah. Literally four letters and five letters. Right, right. Come on. 
oh my God, Obama, he was so a poopul. What? A poopul? You, you mean awful? Is that what you meant to say? A W F U L, not A W P O P P L E? <laughs> oh God. You know what, Mary? I, I, you know, you, you say that you were a good girl when you were young, but I feel like if you were 11 years old, you'd probably, you would probably do this. Um, so you can find this video on our Facebook page at the Anything Show. This news report from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I kid you not, Mary. This 11 year old boy uh, stole a school bus and took it on a 13 mile joyride. Here's the report. It was a shocking scene for some drivers in Baton Rouge this morning after an 11 year old stole a school bus and took police on a wild chase. I can hear the sirens, but I just didn't really know what was going on. So I'm looking around to see if I need to get out of the way. Joy Gratney videoed the chase on her cell phone. She says she was not expecting a child to zoom past her. As it got closer and closer and closer, it's a little boy in there and he was laughing. He's like giggling on the way across Florida. <laughs> So he gets right past me. I see it. I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's a boy, little boy. Another video shows the young boy taking on the brand new roundabout at government in Lobdale. You can see the bus bouncing over several curbs. Baton Rouge police tell us the 11 year old took the bus from Progress Head Start School. They say this type of bus starts up at the push of a button, making it easier for him to take the trip around the capital city before hitting a tree in Libby Smith's front yard in Central. I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? And my first thought was it was a lot of kids on the bus. No one was hurt and officers got the young boy off the bus safely. Thank goodness he was okay, he was safe. But uh, it was not your typical Sunday afternoon uh, occurrence for sure. So we're, we're blessed in that it didn't do any more damage than what it did. Police took the boy into custody. He'll rack up several charges, including theft of a motor vehicle and aggravated flight five years before he can get his license. Yeah. So, uh, so it sounds like the boy is like, uh, he's going to be locked up like as if he was an adult. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's just, that's so Crazy. I know. I know. Eleven years old. That really? he, he's a scoundrel, as as we would call him back in my day. Uh, you know, my two <laughs> my two favorite moments of this news report. Uh, one, uh, the woman uh, when she was talking about the eleven year old boy, just saying like, "Oh my God!" I just saw him, and he was just laughing, like <laughs> like like I'm just imagining like this eleven year old boy just laughing, <laughs> like an evil villain as he's trying to ride a school bus into Literally. the ground. <laughs> Uh, and also, like this older woman uh, who was just like, "Oh, it was. It really wasn't your usual Sunday afternoon occurrence." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, no crap, no crap." It was, it was a little unusual, but not unheard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, usually Sunday afternoon we have fifteen-year-old uh, boys riding school buses, but an eleven-year-old, yeah, right. an eleven-year-old boy decided to ride one today. So yeah, it, it was it was kind of a, a uh, topsy-turvy, exciting Sunday afternoon. A little out of the ordinary, but. Eh. Just a little nothing bit. Too, nothing too major. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, uh, continuing with our viral videos right here on The Anything Show, we have a woman who has a back and forth with her parrot. You know, Mary, I've always imagined you to be a, a, a great parrot owner. I don't know. I mean, there's just something about you that just says, like, yeah, this girl would own a parrot. Um, really? Yeah, maybe because you're both annoying and talk a lot. No, I'm kidding. Probably. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, this woman has a back and forth with her parrot, and when you hear this, uh, basically you'll think that they are an old married couple. Why are you angry? Because Mama's going out? I'm going for a walk. I'm going for a walk. I'll be back. I'm just going for a walk, Myla. I'm just going for a walk. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I'm just going for a walk. I'm going to be back. 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 It's only going to be 45 minutes and I'll be back. Can you chill? Can you chill? I'm only, I'm literally just 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes? Can I go for 30 minutes? No, I can't even go for 30 minutes? You want me to? Oh my God, why? I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go for 30 minutes. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back, okay? Yeah, you're cuter. I you too. Can I go now? Can I go? Can I go? Okay, I'll be back, okay? Bye. Bye. Okay, see you later. Okay, don't be angry. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. I mean, on the one hand, that parrot can really talk. But on the other hand, I'm kind of concerned for this woman. Maybe she needs therapy. No, it's so like people with birds 
like especially birds that can talk uh, like you just talk to them because it's it's cool having an animal you can talk to but she got really intense with that it really seemed like you know oh you're having a deeper relationship with this parrot than you should but i don't know maybe it's... i would definite i have full conversations with jasmine okay and okay 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 so i would definitely have conversations with my bird i don't know i i, I guess when the animal talks back to you that that's when it's like oh wow there's there's a full-blown close relationship that uh, defies <laughs> any normalcy <laughs> Um, uh, so I don't know. I mean, dogs usually cannot really talk back much. So I figured, oh, if a human talks to a dog, like they're a human, that's fine. But if it's like a parrot, like parrots really, they, they talk, they, they, they can actually say words. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know what? Hey, you know, to each their own, but, uh, let's get this woman some Tinder. Maybe, maybe that'll work out for her. <laughs> and last one, lastly, lastly, for our, let's get viral video, uh, of the week. This 19-year-old in New York posted a TikTok video, Mary, on Tuesday showing that if you squat down in a specific pair of pleather pants from Zara, uh, you're going to get a really loud fart sound. Please just keep watching if you shop at Zara. So I bought these really cute, flary type leather pants, and I went out to eat with my family in them. And thank God it was just my family. On her way out, my sister drops her phone. So I go down to pick it up, and this happens. <laughs> so here's a warning if you want to buy these pants. Don't bend down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't that inconvenient? Like, you spend your time, your money, your energy buying a great pair of pants, and then every time you bend down, say, to pick up a pen, uh, <laughs> like, you hear that sound. Oh my gosh! Yeah that, yeah, that must be so embarrassing. Like, imagine if you're on a date and you're wearing those pants, oh. and you just like bend over, and unknowingly <laughs> you just let out this. Oh god! I think that would be the greatest icebreaker ever. I would. I mean, I would personally laugh. I'd be like, "Whoa, okay, looks like we're already getting comfortable passing gas in front of me." Yeah, right. Let me <laughs> let, let, let me do so myself because I just had some coffee and it didn't really agree with my stomach. So. <laughs> Back to you. Yeah. Oh, God. Look, I mean, I, I, hey, I, I'm, I'm a few months into my relationship with my girlfriend, Mary, and honestly, I, I still cannot fart in front of her. Uh, if I'm in a bathroom that's near her and I have to go number two, I have to put the water on so it blocks out the noise. Like, I, I mean, yeah, number two is not a good thing for me. <laughs> I mean, I think probably everyone's that way. Uh, no. I think no, no, it no. It might be... I, I don't know. I've the, I've been in a relationship for six months, and I would just like still wouldn't want to like uh, fart in front of them. <laughs> I, I bet to, I bet to differ. I've heard stories of couples uh, where one person is in the shower and the other person is just coming in and saying, "All right, I'm gonna take a dookie." Like literally, like the one in the same room. There's a shower and a poop going on. Like that's how comfortable couples are. Some couples. All right, I guess I'm. I would be okay with pee, but like after yeah. they took a dump, I don't want to be <laughs> smelling that for the rest of my shower. Exactly. Like you're in the shower, you're supposed to smell cleanliness, lavender soap, and then it's like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Here. All of a sudden, you smell feces. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it kind of it kind of makes it seem like you didn't take a shower in the first place. Uh, Pretty much. All righty. This Let's Get Viral was way too long, but we enjoyed it, so here we go. Yes, with about 12 minutes to go in the show, if you have a uh, viral video you want to share with me and Mary, Facebook at The Anything Show and on Instagram at Anything Show Francois. Share with us, and maybe we'll share it on the show for Let's Get Viral right here on The Anything Show. All right, if you're just joining us, uh, we're almost done, so too late, but... Either way, Jean Francois here at the Big Heavy World Studios in Burlington, Vermont. My partner in crime, Main Squeeze Mary, calling in on Skype from the from the uh, park and ride location in Lindenville, Vermont. All right, Mary, we got about eleven minutes. Uh, let's see if we can squeeze in some Hollywood gossip. You ready? Yes. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> That was a very uh, forceful, moody yes. Like, yes, John, I get it. We do this every single week, of course. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what, what am I going to say? No, I'm not ready, John. I have to go, like, you know, put on a tampon or something. I don't know. Yes. No, John, <laughs> I'm not ready. Actually, give me another few minutes. <laughs> oh, that would be so disturbing. John, I'm having my time of the month. Can we, can we like, wait until next week to do this? Yeah, I guess yes. so. I guess so. All right, Mary, uh, let's let's see if we can bang this out. Kanye West, yes, Kanye West, that guy that's running for president and who peed on his Grammy and 
I mean, my God, he needs to go to a mental hospital. Uh, but yes, he did release his uh, first presidential campaign ad. And I got to say, Mary, it's surprisingly ordinary. Here it is. Kanye for president. America. What is America's destiny? What is best for our nation, our people? What is just, true justice? We have to think about all these things together as a people. To contemplate our future, to live up to our dream, we must have vision. We as a people will revive our nation's commitment to faith, to what our constitution calls the free exercise of religion, including, of course, prayer. Through prayer, faith can be restored. We as a people are called to a greater purpose than ourselves. We are not only a beacon to the world, but we should be servants to each other, to encourage each other, to help each other, to lift up each other, our fellow Americans, that we may all prosper together. We have to act on faith with the sure knowledge that we are pursuing the right goals and doing the right things. We will build a stronger country by building stronger families. Families are the building blocks of society, of a nation. By turning to faith, we will be the kind of nation, the kind of people God intends us to be. I am Kanye West, and I approve this message. Yeah, you know, I was expecting a lot crazier, but uh, for Kanye West, that's actually pretty ordinary. Uh, now, Mary. That is pretty ordinary. Now, Mary, you already voted, but if you have the chance, would you take it back and vote for Kanye listening to that? Nope. No. Oh, fine. Uh, yeah, I got to go with you. Still not voting for Kanye. He needs, uh, I mean, if, you, if you're peeing on a Grammy and posting a, a video of it on Twitter, uh, you know, you, you probably shouldn't. He's hold actually it. disturbed. Like, I think he actually needs, like, mental health. He does. He does. So our best goes out to Kanye. All righty. Uh, DJ David Guetta says Madonna wanted him to produce an album for her until she found out he's a Scorpio. This is what she told him, Mary. Quote, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to work together. It was a pleasure to know you. Goodbye. Madonna is, Madonna is a Leo. Um, now, Mary, do you, do you swear by Zodiac signs? Would you actually say to someone? No. You don't. Okay, you don't care about that. Okay, okay. Because I've, I've, I've done it. I've, like, looked it up on the Internet if I'm, like, with someone or seeing someone and I don't let, know what their sign is. And I'm like, hmm, would we make a good couple? And sometimes it's been yes, and it still doesn't work out. And so, sometimes it's no, and it doesn't work out. So it's like, either way, it's not going to work out for me. So. All right. Well, Mary, um, I looked up our signs, and I just want to know platonically, as uh, as co-hosts, uh, do we work well together? I believe you're an Aquarius, and I'm a Sagittarius. So the ultimate question, would John francois and Main Suisse Mary work well together based on their signs? The answer is... Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, they say, quote, according to uh, compatible-astrology.com, quote, uh, Sagittarius and Aquarius are a great match. The Sagittarius's inquisitiveness and enthusiasm works perfectly with Aquarius's vision and forward thinking, while overall you have a very similar approach to life. So congratulations, Mary. We are indeed not going to kill each other. Not yet. <laughs> uh, not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Wait until I ask you how you're doing again. And then. And then. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was funny. All right. Well, Mary. Um, oh, Harry Styles. Uh, I'm pretty sure you are, are familiar with the song uh, that you've probably heard on the radio way too many times, Watermelon Sugar. Have you heard that song? Uh. <laughs> Yo, you and my coworker uh, yesterday have the same reaction. Hey, it's the number two pop song in the country. What are you gonna do? Uh, so Harry Styles, uh, 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 it's it's a it's a memorable title. Sorry, I, I mean you know yes, it's a very repetitive song, but Watermelon Sugar. That's the title that you're gonna remember. I mean you got you can't deny that, Mary. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Um, where the heck is my Harry Styles audio? I had it here, and now I don't have it. Oh, Harry Styles, you let me down. I, Mary, don't. Oh, here we go. No, you, you let Harry Styles down. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. He makes enough money off of that song right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there, there's speculation in the British tabloids that Harry Styles might be playing James Bond. Um, I'm going to have a mashup played for you, Mary, of Watermelon Sugar and the uh, James Bond theme music. And you tell me if uh, Harry Styles would make a perfect James Bond. Watermelon Sugar High. Watermelon Sugar High. Yeah. 
So when you hear when you hear those two songs together, I mean, can you imagine Harry Styles as Mr. James Bond, Mary? I'm not really. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's a rumor. So maybe it won't come true. You never know. And if it doesn't come true, maybe that'll end Harry Styles' career and you won't have to hear Watermelon Sugar ever again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> oh my god hey mary uh, i know you're looking for a job maybe you could work for saturday night live by just being in their audience yes saturday night live they returned recently they now have a socially distanced audience uh, but only because the show paid them get this mary thanks to covid restrictions in new york state where uh, saturday night live airs in-person audiences are not allowed unless they're paid as employees would be so, uh, Mary, oh. it, yeah, I know. If you ever got lucky to be in the Saturday Night Live audience, you could get a check for $150. Wow. I, I That's know. impressive. I, I, hey, it's impressive. Uh, not impressive enough to pay your rent, but still. I mean, you could uh, get gas. You could cut your hair with that money, I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a lot of things going on. Um, oh, man. I think I forgot some Price is Right audio. Let me, let me pull that up for next week. Damn it. All right. Sorry, Mary. I'm thinking out loud here. Uh, oh, N- Mary, uh, before we go, we have like three minutes left in the Anything show. Did you know that Netflix is testing a tweak to their annoying, apparently annoying, Are You Still Watching message? Now, Mary, you seem to be one of the many people that's annoyed by that Are You Still Watching message on Netflix. And why is that? Because during the day, if I'm gone, I my dog has to stay home, and I leave Netflix on for her so she has something to watch. And if I'm gone for, like, over an hour or, like, two hours, then it'll, like, have the message, are you still watching? And no one's there to hit yes, and so she has nothing to watch Aww. for the remainder of the time that I'm gone. So what happens? Does your dog freak out? Does she make noise? Disturb the neighbors? What's going no, on? No, actually, she she doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave it on just to keep her company. Yeah, yeah. Because really, let's let's be honest. Does your dog understand what the heck is going on on Netflix anyway? Like, I feel. <laughs> I feel like she would be just. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like she would, she would be just as entertained by the "Are you still watching?" message as say an episode of The Office. <laughs> well, some I don't always leave Netflix on. Sometimes I put um, Pandora music on, and that lasts the whole time. So. All right. Hey, look, I, I gotta say, I'm probably the only person that likes the "Are you still watching?" message because I think it's Netflix's way of saying, "Hey." We know you fell asleep, so let's just pause until you wake up and you try to figure out where you left off. So, I don't know. I just think of it in more generous terms. That's just me. Um, so we'll see where that change goes. All righty, Mary, uh, that's that's about it. I mean, I, I, unless you have anything else you want to put out there. I mean, do, do, do you want to just tell people to go F themselves before we go? Like, what do you want to do? <laughs> I want to tell everyone that, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> yeah, I think Mary was saying off the air that um, uh, because we were responding to a study about uh, dogs uh, getting excited when they see a dog's face more than people's face and people getting more excited when they see people's face than dog's face. And Mary said, oh, no, 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 no. For me, it's always dogs because I hate people. No. <laughs> Well, I think my you said their brain lights up. So if a person sees another person, their brain lights up more than if they see a dog. Yeah. I'm like, no, my brain goes black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it goes dark. I want to kill you because you're a person and I don't like that mm-hmm. at all. Oh, God. All right. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Hey, uh, thanks so much for joining us on the Anything Show. Uh, Mary, are you available for another show next week? Um, I was actually going to talk to you about that. Oh, no. So stand by. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So we might have a guest co-host coming in uh, next week. So uh, thanks for letting me know that on air, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you asked. Yeah, that's so. true. That's true. That's true. I asked and you gave me a, an honest answer. Don't ask a question you don't want to know the answer to. I guess. All righty, Mary. I'm going to try to find this dog poop in the studio. Uh, it was nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Yeah, good luck with that. Bye. All right. Listen to The Anything Show with John Francois on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. How does John know how to set up podcasts? Is he that? No, he can't be that smart. Follow on Facebook at The Anything Show and on Instagram at Anything Show Francois. Did you get all that? 